Drug cartels in Mexico have been terrorizing Americans for decades. We're gonna unleash the fury and might of the United States against these cartels. Politicians are calling for war on cartels. Is the United States federal government gonna control our southern border? Or are we gonna let the Mexican drug cartels do it? to combat the crises at America's southern border. Tonight, the country is bracing for a migration influx. Stop this illicit drug trafficking. It's killing Americans everywhere in this country. This has been a major bipartisan failure of the United States government for many decades now. There is no accountability. But an unprecedented intelligence project reveals. I'm like, who knows about this? He's like, I've told everybody. I go, CIA? He goes, yeah. I go, FBI? I go, yeah. I go, DEA? I go, yeah. The front line of this battle is where we least expect. Just pulled out a nine millimeter wrapped in plastic, which is still dripping in gasoline here, out of the gas tank. It's got this AR-15 that was hidden in this rear seat. We have allowed the cartels to amass an army. Name of the game, right? So where are we going? We are going to meet with uh, some gang members, and they're going to show us how they smuggle uh, all these type of weapons uh, from the US into Mexico. These guys are sort of a part of a network that supplies guns to the cartel. Yes. These guns that we're going to see, these guns are going to kill people. Miguel Angel Vega is a journalist who was born and raised in the heart of cartel territory. We hired him to help us gain access to gun trafficking operations from the U.S. into Mexico. This could be any town USA. Could be anywhere. We're on the trail of gun runners crisscrossing the American West. The path was leading south across the border. Even though there's a long, long line of cars trying to get into Mexico, the checks have got to be very, very rudimentary at best because we've been, we've pretty much been consistently moving. We're stopped here, photographed, and that's it. I've not seen a single vehicle stopped and pulled over. So we just received a pin drop from one of our contacts. We're not going to any touristic destination here. Right. We're going to Cartland. This feels really sketch. We are about to see American weapons in the hands of Mexican cartels. Mexico has incredibly strict gun laws, making it next to impossible for civilians to buy firearms. Only one gun store exists for the entire country, and it's on a military base. To get firearms, criminals have to smuggle them in. Oh, wow. Just pulled out a 9 millimeter wrapped in plastic out of the gas tank. It's got this AR-15 that was hidden in this rear seat. He can hide guns in the door panels, in the tires. The smuggler said that he can hide upwards of 30 plus guns at any given time in a small sedan like this, effectively a mule for for these weapons going into Mexico. This is crazy. How much do you make when you do this? $5,000 for one crossing. Very fast. That was easy. Very fast to compare. Very easy to get these arms in, in America. Are you a US citizen or a Mexican citizen? Both. The US announced recently that I was cracking down on gun trafficking from the US into Mexico. Are you at all afraid of what the U.S. government might do and what, what kind of an impact that might have on your, on your business? No. No, you're not afraid? No. So nothing has changed? Please. No fear. Normal. Two cartels control the vast majority of gun and drug trafficking in and out of the U.S. Jalisco New Generation, better known by its acronym CJNG and Sinaloa, Despite high-profile arrests, their smuggling operations have been growing. 
A CBS Reports investigation found that Americans have been aiding narcos to smuggle military-grade weapons out of the U.S. into Mexico at a scale and sophistication unknown to the American public. This story is based on exclusively obtained government documents and interviews with half a dozen current and former officials with direct knowledge, as well as senior members of the Sinaloa cartel. So we are arming the cartels? 100%. No doubt about it. I worked for ATF for approximately 25 years. I worked street guns and drug crime. Can you tell me a little bit more about your role, particularly around trafficking of, of guns? Towards the end of my career, um, I had an excellent opportunity to work in a, a really unique place. Chris Demline was assigned to the Drug Enforcement Administration's intelligence hub in Washington, D.C., known as Special Operations Division. I had an intel analyst come to me one day who had specialized in the cartels for years. And he said to me, hey, I've got some stuff you may want to see. It was instantly apparent that the cartels had large-scale covert weapons trafficking networks all across the U.S., from coast to coast, from north to south, and that they were funneling thousands of guns into Mexico to fuel the drug war. I asked him, I said, who's doing something about this? And he said, he said, nobody. I was like, holy crap. Like, are you serious? He's like, yeah. I'm like, who knows about this? He's like, I've told everybody. I go, CIA? He goes, yeah. I go, FBI? I go, yeah. I go, DEA? I go, yeah. They all tell me it's a gun problem. And that would fall with ATF. And I went, well, you want to do something about it? And he was like, yeah. That something became the first U.S. intelligence project focused on international gun trafficking, launched in 2018. Until then, law enforcement had been conducting operations mostly focused on busting individual, low-level gun runners. Instead, this new mission would attempt to identify and take down entire smuggling networks. Whether they were Democrat, whether they were Republican, they were pro-gun, they were anti-gun, everybody came together to focus on the problem for the good of the nation. They called it Thor. The full scope of the project and its operations have never been reported until now. Why are you talking about Project Thor now? This is the story the American people need to know. What are we looking at here? This is the creation of intelligence data from all over the United States. Can we see how and where one of the major cartels is able to procure its weapons? Essentially, these are like hubs. So you think of terrorist cells, these are like individual cells. Okay. In a matter of months, Project Thor discovered dozens of cartel gun running networks. This is just one example of how the CJNG cartel had been trafficking firearms. Law enforcement had missed them for years. The cartels have their fingers across the country and they're able to pull firearms from all over the country, and they do. Here's how it works. When narcos want guns, they activate a phone tree, calling accomplices who live across the U.S. This is not a Southwest border issue. We've got Wisconsin, we've got Portland up here, mm. a race scene up there, right? This exclusively obtained intelligence map shows where this is happening. Every pinpoint is a gun purchase traced directly to cartel violence. Thor tracked buyers as far north as Maine and even Alaska. Men and women that were U.S. citizens, right, and didn't have a criminal history and could purchase guns. These people are paid to buy weapons and ammo, then illegally pass them off to brokers. Couriers pick up those guns and drive them across the southwest border into Mexico and into the hands of cartels. Prior to Project Thor, the ATF concluded that the timeline from purchase in the U.S. to use in a violent crime in Mexico was more than one year. But Project Thor tracked orders from a purchase to an assassination attempt in less than one month. Project Thor wasn't just about, hey, we have this problem, but we came up with a solution. In 2022, the U.S. Department of Justice announced the sentencing of an Oklahoma man Project Thor discovered was providing arms to cartels. This case that you'll hear about today is part of Operation Thor. This case was the first Mexican cartel firearm parts exportation and manufacturing case to be indicted in the United States. Demline and his team connected hundreds of investigations across four different law enforcement agencies. Thor helped solve those cases, put American accomplices in prison, and track down the narcos in charge so they could cut off entire supply chains. They were quietly awarded the Distinguished Service Medal in 2021. Not only did they advance this new mission outside of their regular duties, but they also continued to push and transform the ATF culture into one that is intelligence-led. Extremely well done job. We're talking about Thor in the past tense. Is, is Thor gone? Thor, 
um, as our project is, is, is gone, it's no more. I was told priorities in the US government shifted, the money was gone. In response to CBS reports investigative findings, the Department of Justice and Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms acknowledged that American gun running networks are the primary supplier of military grade weapons to Mexican drug cartels. But senior justice officials said they were not familiar with Project Door. The truth is, the U.S. was turning a blind eye to the, you know, the flow of weapons illegally into Mexico. That is outrageous. Most Americans have no idea yeah. that we are effectively arming the enemy next door. You are correct. You are correct. This has been a major bipartisan failure of the United States government for many decades now. You wouldn't believe when I was raising this issue, there were people in the government who said, no, they're not really military weapons that go to Mexico. It's just handguns. But then to me, you're, you're, you're missing the point if they're purchasing, you know, serious killing power. They're seeking a level of weaponry that outguns Mexican law enforcement authorities. We see machine guns, like the M134 minigun kit, for instance, which is used by the American military and is capable of shooting 2,000 to 4,000 rounds per minute. Increasingly, people buy military-grade weapons online. Some websites function like DoorDash for guns. People can order for pickup or delivery. This gun is perfect for shooting targets or defending yourself against other attackers. It's also perfect for hunting game. When I put a uh, 50 cal machine gun into my cart, and then I could just one over. And so, it's just a few clicks. A lot easier than I expected. It is easier to buy guns in America than almost anywhere else in the world thanks to its unique constitutional right to bear arms. And cartels take advantage of that freedom. This has nothing to do with our Second Amendment rights. I mean, I'm a constitutional lawyer. There's no conceivable Second Amendment right to send weapons out of the United States to countries where they are illegal, and in fact, violating United States export control law in the process. Demline agreed to demonstrate some of the firepower cartels have been getting their hands on to understand what Mexican law enforcement is up against. Going on! Ready? That was a Barrett 50 caliber rifle, just one example of the type of firearm that Project Thor traced directly from Mexican cartels back to purchases in the U.S. This is, in fact, a weapon that is in the hands of the cartel, but somewhere in an American store. Yes. And the cartels have deployed these against the Mexican military. Oh, yeah. They're fighting it back against with your uh, 223 556 round. But so this is the cartels, and that's the Mexican military. That's what you got, yeah. Wow. Not quite uh, little, symmetrical here. A little disparate. Yeah. These firearms could be equipped with armor-piercing rounds capable of lethal force from more than a mile away. For this demonstration, Demline placed a reinforced target 100 yards away. Okay, let's go see what we hit. Yeah. Looks like we hit dead center. Went through this armor plating, a body, and another cinder body. block wall. So through the building, through armor, through a body, and out the other side of the building. They're just they're tearing them apart. Yeah. Tearing them apart. Yeah. We're going to unleash the fury and might of the United States against these cartels. A growing chorus of political leaders have been sounding the alarm, pushing to designate cartels terrorists, deploy the military, and declare war. But Mexico is a U.S. ally, and its government decries any potential use of American military force as a violation of its national sovereignty. We travel to a narco stronghold just over the southwest border with Arizona to find out how cartels would react if the U.S. attacked. 
This man says he's a lieutenant in the Sinaloa cartel. He wouldn't reveal his identity as a condition of speaking publicly. Would the cartels respond if the U.S. military struck? So the guns are a way to protect business interests? Do you fear for your life? Have we learned nothing from Afghanistan, Iraq? We are going to get caught in a quicksand if we go into Mexico that will make Vietnam or Iraq or Afghanistan look like a tea party. Certainly seems to me, as somebody who was U.S. ambassador to Mexico, that that is the very last alternative you consider once you have exhausted every other alternative. It's like strategy 101. If we were supplying ISIS with bombs, the first thing we would do is say, in America, we're stopping supplying ISIS with bombs. In the spring of 2023, the Biden administration announced it was making it a top priority to stop cartel smuggling operations. We are sending dangerous weapons, particularly assault weapons, to Mexico. To Mexico. They're asking us, please stop it. Cut it off at the border. What in God's name are we becoming if we don't do this? The government focused on gun seizures at the border as well as diplomatic negotiations to train and equip Mexican law enforcement. Nearly 2,000 firearms were seized from last October to just this past March. That's a more than 65% increase over the same period last year. According to the Mexican government, that number, 2,000 guns, is how much the cartels smuggle in a single day. Troy Miller is in charge of America's border agency. As we sit here, Hundreds of guns, thousands of guns are going from the U.S. into Mexico on a daily basis. What are we doing about the guns flowing into the hands of the cartels? We've been pulsing and surging operations along the southwest border to, to look for weapons and then increase our information sharing with our partners in Mexico. I could drive across the border with guns in my car. And the chances are I'm going to be successful. Isn't it incumbent upon... CBP to be checking to make sure that weapons are not crossing into Mexico. It's a joint responsibility. You know, we are also responsible for checking everything that's coming into the country. But as somebody who drove back and forth multiple times, no one looked. We're working on these issues very closely with our Mexican partners and we can do better every day. When I was in Mexico, I would have meetings with the Mexican government about gun issues. And, you know, my staff would prepare for me a list of bullet points to raise at the meeting. I said, well, I want to see the bullet points prepared for the last ambassador and the ambassador before that. And guess what? They were the same bullet points. We've been talking about this for 10, 20 years. Nothing is changing, right? I don't think that's acceptable. The murder rate in Mexico has gone up six-fold, 600%. And it's not because of anything but really the cartels and the, their ability to access firearms. We're basically just turning a blind eye to that. You have people who are trying to flee the country because of insecurity and violence. 100%. If that was the murder rate in my country, I'd be trying to get the heck out as well with my family. They own the country. Nobody is going to bring any of them to justice, even if they can figure out who did it, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's like a chorizo. So what do we know? Someone was shot uh, to death. We're in Culiacan, Mexico, ground zero for the Sinaloa cartel. So we've just come to the scene of a, a homicide. Uh, all we really know at this point is that one person was shot and killed in a pretty quiet residential area just off a main uh, thoroughfare here. Project Thor discovered that as much as 85% of cartel firearms found at crime scenes trace back to the U.S. How often is it that the cartels are linked to this kind of violence? <laughs> often, very often. I would dare to say all the time. Buenas tardes. You see that car? Yeah. That's the victim's car. 
Is there much of an investigation that happens no, here? No, I think in Culiacan, cartel related yeah. murders, they are like in complete impunity. Now, is that because they're powerful? Or is that because they have bought off police? Because they are powerful and because they are in the payroll of the cartel. I don't want to say all of them, sure. but you know, generally speaking, right. that's the case. That's how powerful the cartels are. Gun violence in Mexico has been getting worse. Firearms are responsible for seven out of every 10 homicides. That's hundreds of thousands of people killed with American weapons. In fact, more civilians were killed over the last 15 years in the war on drugs here than the entire wars on terror in Iraq and Afghanistan combined. We're having zero impact, and you can see our strategy as the United States is completely ineffective. We need to do something else. We have not done that in federal law enforcement. The United States is basically allowing those guns to flow to Mexico, to fight the Mexican government, to produce more fentanyl, and then pump it into our country when we have the ability to shut down the pipeline here, or at least curtail it greatly. The government is aware and has chosen to allow this to sort of just sit in the vault. There are a few career people that are still in, that know about Project Thor. Some of those people are pushing it, some of those people are not, but the blueprint is there. Somebody just has to dust it off and go, okay, this is what we're gonna do. And you have hope that work can live on. Absolutely, and there's people suffering because we're not solving our own problem of letting those guns go. Do we have the power and the might and the capability to do that? No doubt, so let's do it.